All right, so today we'll not only learn how to export with the best settings with Premiere Pro, but if you stay tuned till the end, then we'll also learn how to create a preset out of it so that you don't have to go through the whole setting again and again. Hello everyone, I'm Nitin and welcome to QSS and today I'm going to share some examples so that you can get best export with the Premiere Pro for multiple platforms. Alright, so without wasting further time, let's focus on the screen. Alright, so here is the footage I've got from the Pexels, a man walking into the jungle and let's, let's assume as if we have done our editing part. Now just before I just export it, I just want to share a quick tip that in case you have a very very big project and you want to take out the render of a specific part then you can just press i on the keyboard from this for the starting point like this and o in the keyboard for the last frame of the video now you can see this highlighted area in the timeline and if you export it now you will get the render of this highlighted area only okay so this was a quick tip all right so if you just right click you can just clear in and out all right so let's continue with our tutorial so as we assume that we are done with the editing part so let's press ctrl plus m on the keyboard for the export settings and let's start with the format so make sure you select h.264 and why h.264 because if you select h.264 you will get the format of the video as a mp4 and mp4 can be played in almost all the devices right so that's why we have to export in h.264 okay so now once you're done with it, now you can go to the presets. Under the presets, by default, it is selected on high bitrate, match source high bitrate, right? And let's keep it high bitrate. In case you are very sensitive about the quality and you don't want to lose any quality, then you can click on adaptive high bitrate. Because in this case, you won't lose the quality of the video. And in this case, the size may increase, may increase, okay? So we are done with the format and the presets. Now you can just name your video by clicking here, this highlighted blue area. When you click on it, you can go to the folder like this and name it whatever you want, okay? Sample, let's name it to sample, okay? So now you get these two checkbox. You make sure you check both of them, okay? and why they are here in case you don't want to export a video then you can just uncheck the video and you will get the render of the audio all right so in this example we are exporting both of them audio and video all right now comes the summary part and summary part is very important guys and why it is important because in this we can check both of them whether they are matching or not the expect ratio and the frames we can check from the source and the output for example we can see here in the output we can see 1920 by 1080 24 frames and in the sequence in the, in the source in our source we can see it was 1920 by 1080 and 24 frames so it is good to go we can render it because we, are, we can see the settings are matching right now okay in case your setting doesn't match you can change it how you can change it you can go to this video option under this basic video settings you can see this uh, this checkbox you can just uncheck it you can un unlink it and you can just change whatever you want okay so here it was 1920 by 1080 only so now just unlink it just link it and check it okay so once you're done with it you can just scroll it down so by default it will select the hardware encoding under this performance if you have a good graphical support in case you don't have a good graphical support then you can just select the software encoding now under the profile uncheck it and click to high under the levels uncheck it and click to 4.2 okay so once you're done with it you can just scroll down and now is the main setting under this export settings that is a bitrate setting uh, so much setting <laughs> all right all right so in this we can see our two options that is cbr and vbr and vbr have a variation that is a vbr pass 2 and vbr pass 1 so what is cbr and vbr CBR is a constant bitrate that you will get a constant bitrate per seconds in the video throughout the video. Okay. And VBR are the options that is a variable bitrate under which the there will be a variation in the uh, bits in particular seconds of the video. Right. So they won't be constant uh, bit rates. Right. So in, if we go to the VBR2 that I usually don't take out the render with because I don't find uh, much difference in the VBR pass 1 and VBR pass 2. In the VBR pass 2, what we can see, the target, we can set a target bitrate and a maximum bitrate. So for example, I was taking an example for YouTube. So I can keep it target bitrate is as 10 and maximum bitrate is around 20. Okay. 
or target at 15 right so what will happen the requirement the standard requirement for this video was to 15 to get a better quality so i achieved it and in some cases for example in some scenes there will be a lot of colors and a lot of depth or maybe something else to make it more clear the software can use a value of 20 so that i can get the a combination of 15 and 20 to get a better quality video it takes a lot of time to export so that's why i don't use it i always keep it vbr1 only and because it gives the pretty much very good result for the better quality i go for the vbr1 passes but let me give you an example for let for example there is an client and he wants to upload a video on a youtube and uh, before you give him the final quality he wants to check how is the video so in this case you are just giving him in the sample you can just go for the cbr constant bitrate and you you can just decrease it for example i can make it 5 right because this time i'm not concerned about quality i'm concerned about the content and the editing part just to show him as a sample so in this case we will have the minimum file size and we can just deliver the data as he finalizes he says okay it is done you can just go to the vbr pass one you can just increase it to around 15 why 15 because i just googled it and found it was the standard requirement for the better quality for the youtube to have a 50 around 15 or 16 bit rates all right i did this and then you can just you go down you can click on use maximum render quality and after all these settings we are getting these options so there must be some reason right so you must click it okay so once you're done with it and what what is this use previews you have to check this also why i'm saying check this also for example in case let's come back to timeline under this timeline we see three like three color lines right this is yellow right now we also see a green we also see a red for example if i apply some effect on it it will say red because it is not rendered and in case i just put in an out points go to the sequence and render it out it will be a green line so what happens in the big project that we edit sometimes we render it within the timeline right so when we will be doing an export and we will be checking this use previews what the software will do it will use those rendered files so th this will uh, minimize your minimize your time for the export so this is very helpful in case you have already rendered within the timeline you can use this so that it can save your time right so we are done with all the settings all right so before we export it i just want to share a tip that was a save preset so if we save is by clicking here you can save your pre save this as a preset right uh sample youtube so this is how you can just make a preset and save your time so uh, in case you come next time for example you are on a, another project you press ctrl m you can go here and click on your preset saved preset and you saved your time you can just directly click on export so i guess you get you got an idea how you can render with the best possible settings within the video so before i just end up this tip tutorial i just want to share one more example there are some cases when you you have got a 4k footage and you want to render it out into full hd then you are good to go you must do it and if you do it you will get a very good quality render but you should never do a reverse of it for example you have a footage of a full hd that is 1920 by 1080 and you want to take out the render in 4k that is not a good idea because it will look like this your export in that case you have you may have to scale it up and again your quality will decrease so you must always pre-plan it so that you don't end end up with such situations right so hope you got it and if you think i have missed something you can just let me know in the comments i will try to cover it in the next video and if you have any further more queries let me know in the comments so till then stay safe be creative bye bye